koinonia, a place of encounter with the Holy Spirit, and transformation by the principles of God's kingdom. Us to just thank the Lord for 2019. Everyone together, Father, thank you. Go ahead and bless His name. We do not take the privilege of life for granted. Only the living can praise the Lord. Lord, as a family of faith, we say thank you. Thank you for the privilege that you have given us again. An opportunity to see your outstretched arm. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, thank you for another opportunity. Thank you for life. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your power. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for access. Thank you for victory. We give you all the praise. Thank you for koinonia. Thank you for what you are doing. Lord, we do not take it for granted to celebrate your faithfulness in our midst. Lord, I pray that as always tonight, move upon our lives, change, transform, heal, deliver, build, set us on fire, O oh God. And I pray that the word you have given us, that you have declared by your mouth, will be effectual even over our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Happy New Year. God bless you. Please turn to two or three people and tell them Happy New Year officially. And then you sit down. Hallelujah. It's good to see everyone. We bless the name of the Lord. We'll get straight to the business of the night. We have a lot to do. Genesis chapter 17 As it is Our culture here Every first service of the year We take our time to just open up The prophetic word given to us May I remind us again That The prophetic words that we bring by the spirit They are not just Human concoction to keep you know, the pressure on leadership to make sure that you have to bring a word. I was sharing with the leaders that if God did not say anything, we would just continue the last thing he said. Hallelujah. And sometimes I know that we can make a lot of ritual out of these things. So there's all kinds of pressure on the man of God. What is God saying? And then sometimes we just scout through all the things we believe he had said in time past and look for what our ministry has not captured we have not done open heavens oh yeah let this year be but next year is open. you know all of that and then you find out that what you claim god said does not come to pass because he's only committed to defending what he really said hallelujah and we thank god for the hearing ear and the seeing eye genesis chapter 17 the year of extraordinary fruitfulness. Verse 6 And I will make thee 
exceeding fruitful and I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee we are reading to 8 and I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after in their generation for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee the last verse and I will give unto thee and unto the seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession and I will be their God hallelujah God directs people by making a commitment through his word God's word is his bond and he commits himself to you by giving you a word the word of God is a representation of his integrity upon your life hallelujah it's important for us to understand this that when God's word comes to you then you have an assurance a token of certainty that he surely will deliver as spoken his hand will always follow where his word goes you can find where the hand of God is moving by knowing where his word is going hallelujah there's no point guessing where the power of God is wherever the word of God the light the illumination that comes from his word that place according to scripture is the hiding place of his power so you can know where God's power is if God says I am the Lord that healed thee then you can know where the power of the Lord is channeled and you can know what dimension of operation he wants to bring and birth so when God gave this word for me I think I spent a whole day just praying and crying this revelation you know many times even us men of God sometimes we can be victims of the tradition it's good to think about the people a good shepherd lays down his life but many times we don't take out time to believe what God said ourselves hallelujah I took out time and prayed my life out on this word because I believe for myself I believe for the ministry and my assignment is to guide you by the spirit tonight to connect truly with what God is saying not just to be aware that he said it hallelujah God lives in the realm of eternity please follow me tonight but his operation with men is fragmented into times and seasons are we together now God is not limited by times and seasons he dwells in the realm of eternity but according to his wisdom and his system of operation the earth is governed by the mystery of times and seasons are we together now so the program of God is spaced between times and seasons and the Holy Spirit is mandated to supply the grace the illumination the empowerment that is required to maximize seasons so the moment the word of God is released the Holy Spirit now begins to hover around that word and then by extension upon whoever receives that word if you do not receive the word you do not qualify for the hovering of the spirit he doesn't have any bias to an individual he's following the word so you invite him by receiving the word you don't just invite him by coming it is the spirit and the bride so if you reject the word then you will cannot attract his presence with respect to his dealings in a season is God speaking to us tonight so we must receive his word and then the Holy Spirit comes to energize that word to give you the capacity all the equippings required to make that word true it's not new to us in this ministry we have learned again and again that just because God said something does not guarantee that it will happen correct it says forever O Lord thy word is settled not in your life it is settled in heaven it will take you engaging the relevant mysteries of the kingdom to make it in earth as it is in heaven are we together now and so it says I will make you exceeding fruitful I will cause nations to come out of you it says kings will come out of your loins 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. We'll just walk through a few scriptures and then I'll begin to explain, give us some instructions and we pray tonight. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Genesis chapter 35, please, and verse 11. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, we give you God. From the rising, I want you to look at that scripture. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. So you are not confused who is speaking to you. And the power that backs him. He says, I am God Almighty. Then he says, be fruitful. Be fruitful. And multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee. Then he says, and kings shall come out of your loins. Remember Psalm 112 says, Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. He said his seed, part of the principles of dominion is that your seed must reproduce and replicate you. You cannot dominate just with your mind alone. You must dominate with your seed. You must bring something out of you to reproduce your result. This is what confirms dominion. So it is in the glory of the saints that the Christ is glorified. If the saints do not rise in glory, then the Christ cannot be glorified. Are we together now? It is in the victory of the Son that the Father is glorified. Then the saints in partnership with the Holy Spirit bring glory to the Son. Are we together now? Then the dominion of the church over creation, principalities and powers is where the glory of the church lies. I am God. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. Not a suggestion. Be fruitful. Two more scriptures. Psalm 1 and verse 3. Popular but powerful scripture. Psalms chapter 1 and verse 3. The Bible says, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season and his leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper he shall be he's trying to paint the picture of a kind of man that god is describing and he's saying that man will be in the similitude of a tree that is planted by the rivers of water you know, sometimes when you study the Bible, try to understand what God is saying. He didn't say by, that is planted by the rivers. He said the rivers of water. Then he says that he brings forth his fruit in season and his leaf does not wither. And so whatever he does prospers. One more scripture. John chapter 15 and verse 8. Just give us King James, if we can have amplified, that would be fine. John 15 and verse 8. Now, this scripture is very powerful. The Bible says, when you bear or produce much fruit, my Father is honored and glorified. So, there's no point being confused as to how God is glorified. It says when you bear much fruit, my Father is honored and glorified and you show and prove yourselves to be true followers. So fruitfulness is a demonstration. It is a validation that you were truly mentored by God. It's proof that you are part of Him. Are we together now? King James says, hearing is my father glorified. Hearing, 
This is how the Father is glorified. When you bear much fruit, and he says, by so doing, so shall ye be my disciples. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. Paul was teaching on the principle of sowing and reaping, and then he said something. He says, and God is able to make how many? That means grace is in dimensions. The Bible didn't say God is able to make grace. All grace. There are different kinds of graces and I've defined for you what grace is. Grace is not just limited to, you know, unmerited access and all of that. Grace like love has dimensions. I define grace as every good and perfect gift that comes from above. Every possibility given to the saints that is only routed in Christ is called grace. So anointing is grace. Are we together now? Victory is grace. Wisdom is grace. Grace is like the spiritual warehouse that hosts every tool, every arsenal that has been stored for the victory of the saints. And the Bible says there are different kinds of graces. Wisdom is a grace. The anointing is a grace. Intuition is a grace. Creativity is a grace. And the Bible says on account of God's desire to make you fruitful, He can coordinate all grace. That means that God looks at your life and finds out the dimensions of His grace that must be captured in your life for the result He said you produce to be produced. And that in His wisdom, He is able to make all grace abound. The word abound here means to make it within your reach. God is able to make all grace abound towards you so that you always having sufficiency the word sufficiency here is not just abundance of resources alone. That means that you are not limited in anything as far as your assignment or your productivity is concerned. And then it says that you having sufficiency in all things may abound. The goal is to produce good works. But the Bible says the system is that God will have to assist you. So, fruitfulness is not something that is just a product of your initiative. You have to be assisted by God. And the Bible says one of the ways that God assists us is that by His intelligence, He scans through your life and finds out what dimensions, the graces that are not yet there. And God is able to make all grace. Favor is grace. He can make that grace abound towards you. Intelligence is grace. Divine direction is grace. And God is able to make all grace, to make all grace, to make all grace, like instruct them, favor, go and meet Pastor Alpha. God is able to make. He knows that if that dimension of grace is not in your life, it will make him look like a liar. So he puts pressure on his own integrity and commands that dimension of grace to find a way of colliding with you, Jesus. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye, having all sufficiency, he says, in all things may abound to every good work. I believe this for my life all grace. So it's no surprise if someone cannot sleep because of me and wakes up in the morning and says, I don't know why I was thinking about you. I know what is happening in the spirit. God is making all grace. He's coordinating the tools, the possibilities that must be featured in my life. All grace. If he means him to silence a wicked man somewhere in the village, he can make all grace. That is grace too. Judgment is grace. Because it has the ability to make the word of God come to pass in your life. God is able to make all grace. So he looks at you as a man of God and knows that there are certain testimonies you need in your ministry for certain people to call your attention. So he makes all grace. He will direct that grace. He knows that for as long as you recycle a particular dimension of testimonies, you will not call on the attention of kings. So he will supply that grace. All grace. 
he can delay your destiny helper because you were delayed he will punish another man to make sure you must meet in time all grace that is called mercy all grace you were supposed to run fast but you slowed down then god makes another man to slow down to wait for you because you have to meet all grace believe what i'm telling you now my brothers and my sisters whoever receives this privilege from god is a sign and a wonder you will look at such lives and marvel God is able to make all grace. God gave me a revelation of this scripture in my time of retreat and I didn't know what to do with myself again. To make all grace. All grace. I sit down and I discern that you are thirsty. And whoever has water within your vicinity is in trouble because one man is thirsty. I make sure all water find the way, whether it's from a well, whether it's from rain, whether it's from a factory producing water. I know you need water, so I will coordinate. Grace is a force. It can make things come to you. If God knows you need the ministry of men, he will make all grace. All grace. They will come to you and wonder why they are there. You will know they didn't bring themselves. All grace. If God sees that the level you are stepping into, there is a dimension of consistent prayer contact that you must make to allow your spirit build capacity. In a strange way, without your requesting it, a kind of fire will land on you. It's not something that you will try to do. It will so quicken you, you will wake up and pray non-stop like a madman. He's making all grace. Because what he's about to give you, he vets your capacity and sees that you are, you are not yet built to hold it. So he makes all grace. And you find out that all through February, all his dealings with you is around prayer and fasting. And you say, God, what are you doing? It is still all grace. Because you who cannot fast two days without tasting something, you are now going three days dry, complete dry. I don't mean breaking in the night. It's not your human making. He's making all grace. And by the third day, he comes to you and said, this is why I put the fast. There is a new oil. There is a new wine. I was shedding off the old wine skin. So you can carry something that cannot be disproved. We give you God the highest praise from the rising of the sun. Mm. We give you say the highest praise from the rising of the sun. One more time. We give you the highest praise. You had, you had the testimony of the gentleman here That an angel can stand up and give you a number All grace He found out that every man he instructed to honor you disobeyed And he said, no, not even men will stop me If they will not praise me, I can raise stones 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 let me tell you, it's a fearful thing when God becomes desperate over a man. It's a fearful thing to see. That the jealousy of God becomes directed towards a man. Clear the way for that man. Because there is nothing you can do in time that can interrupt what... Listen, listen, I want you to get this. I'm showing you the implications of receiving a prophetic word. The Holy Ghost is not looking for a man. The Holy Ghost is following where the word is. So if you receive the word, you attract his attention. And once he comes, that place where the word has been received becomes the center of his activity until the word achieves what it came to do. All grace, all grace, all grace, all grace, all grace. No matter how he would do it, if, if it means him overturning, all grace must reach you. There's something in biology 
called tropic movements. Remember? We were taught something like that. There's geotropism, there's phototropism. It's a system by which plants insist until they grow. So if you bend a plant in a way and it needs sunlight, it will find a way to squeeze itself until it receives that light. If you close it, how many of you have seen trees break fence by the root because they need to spread. They were not designed to be confined. And whoever made a mistake and put a fence on it, it will keep quiet like it will shift it until you see the fence cracking. How forcible are right words. They will push every barrier until the word of God prevails. So if God has told you, man of God, this is your season of appearing, I tell you, forget about whoever likes you or doesn't like you. It's a joke. When his hand rests upon you, he will station all your destiny helpers in a meeting where he will so lavishly anoint you. When your enemies testify of God upon your life, you have won. You have won. Because the testimony of your enemies is more believable than that of your friends. Their enmity validates the truthfulness of what they are saying. I don't like this pastor, but my God, I saw it by myself. This is the hand of God. Look at the scripture again. And then we'll deal with a few things. And God is able. God is able. If God were not able, then I would be afraid. Because how will the grace come? It's one thing to tell me a possibility. But the Bible says God is able. Let me tell you what it means to be able. To be able means to be capable. To be able means it is within your jurisdiction. Ah, within your jurisdiction. If I have 10 naira and I see a little search of pure water, I am able to buy it. The resource to make it happen is there. Is that true? If I have a company, for instance, and I see a young man who is a graduate and trusting God for a job, I am able. Able means it is within your ability. So let's go now. He says, it is within God's ability to make all grace. It is within God's ability to bring the anointing. It is within God's ability to open you up to a strange dimension of visions and dreams. It is within God's ability to manipulate the loyalty of men towards you. God is able to make all grace. Not grace, all grace. Abound towards you. That means that the next time you see strange things happening, you will not act ignorant again. The next time you find out that you wanted to go in the morning and a visitor delayed you, and now that you are coming out to meet someone you've been trying to meet, you will have an interpretation to that coincidence. All grace, walking by the spirit of wisdom. God has decided to channel his jealousy towards us this year like never before. And then declaring that we be fruitful. It will be wicked. He says, he says, when I send thee, lackest thou anything? In other words, I cannot send you without equipping you. God does not equip you by giving you money. He doesn't equip you just by giving. No, no, no. He equips you by giving you something supernatural. That will begin to manipulate men to your own wonder. Why are you helping me? And the person says, honestly, if I had the answer... And then you know there is a reason. Why do you want to buy chairs for my church? Don't you have a pastor to say, I, 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 I can't explain why. And you know all grace, all grace being channeled towards you. Please sit down. So by the spirit of the living God and by the illumination of God's word, we know that he is bringing us into a season of extreme productivity. He's bringing us to a season of influence. He's bringing us to a season of increase. He's bringing us to a season of unusual results. What does it mean to have extraordinary fruitfulness? It means to establish territorial dominion 
through unusual, consistent, and ever-increasing results to establish territorial dominion through unusual, consistent, ever-increasing results. What does it mean to be fruitful? To be fruitful means to expand, to break borders, to venture into virgin horizons, dimensions never thought possible. Give us Colossians chapter 1, please, and then verse 9 and 10. Colossians 1, 9 and 10 very powerful scripture it says for this cause we also since the day we heard of it do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye be filled with the knowledge of his will and in all wisdom and spiritual understanding 10 that ye may walk worthy of the lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God being fruitful in every good work fruitfulness is a time of a mighty manifestation of supernatural results in every area every area mighty manifestation of supernatural results fruitfulness also entails a time of restoration a time of restoration until the spirit be poured upon us from on high he says 32 and verse 15 isaiah then he says that the desert land be counted for a fruitful vine and a fruitful vine for a forest until the spirit be poured upon us from on high it's a time of restoration extraordinary fruitfulness entails a time of great favor great favor one of the evident graces that should be at work in the saints when God declares fruitfulness let's look at the keys very quickly for every door we desire open in the spirit there are keys I'm going to give us two keys tonight very quickly that will control are experiencing extraordinary fruitfulness number one the first key is embracing the ministry of the word please write it down embracing the ministry of the word my brothers and my sisters we are living in times where your neglecting the word will be to your own peril it's not only a prerequisite for your spiritual advancement but it will translate to your success in general the bible likens the word to water are we together now and biology teaches us i hope i'm right forgive me if i'm not but i think i am that the human body contains over 70 percent of water that is the condition among other things for a man to be said to be healthy and alive so if a body leaves because of the abundance of the water in it and that even our own earth as an ecosystem survives because of the abundance of water two thirds of the world being covered with water then imagine a life without water that's exactly what happens to a spirit without the word I know a little bit about what the absence of water can do in a human body it can cause shock and can even kill the person so when there is no that water of the word is not at work in you there is a deficiency a system was designed in man to detect thirst and I think they tell us, medical people tell us that by the time you really feel thirsty, your body has already been frustrated demanding water. Is that true? That you shouldn't have to wait until the body gets that thirsty. 
the ministry of the word and you know many times when we say the word of god many believers just oh yeah yeah you mean scriptures no 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 the word of god is not just a vague compendium of letters for us to cram and quote and recite like a charm for victory no no we must understand what the word of god is i told you that the word of god is a compendium of god's methodology the word of god is a compendium of his system of operation so by the time the bible says that the word of god dwells in you richly it means that you come into a full comprehension of god's ways of doing things that you'll be enlightened illumination by the spirit granted unto you that you will know know not awareness fellowship with the mystery The ministry of the word nobody in the kingdom ever bears fruit ignoring the word he will only bear fruit in season when he is planted by the rivers of water the rivers of the word you will yield your fruit in season and then your leaves will not wither he said meditate on these things give yourself wholly to them and then he says your profiting will appear unto all is god blessing us now please write this down there are three dimensions of the word of god that we must embrace that is tied to fruitfulness number one according to colossians chapter one please leave it there and verse nine the first dimension of the word of god that we need is the knowledge of his will the knowledge of his will the knowledge of his will number two the word of god as wisdom number three the word of god manifesting a spiritual understanding so the bible tells us that i desire that you be filled with these tripartite dimensions one the knowledge of his will that you understand the system of operation of god that you are able to discern his will through it hebrews chapter 1 says god who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us by the fathers and through the prophets verse 2 says have in this last day spoken to us through his son the word which he has appointed to be heir of all things that his most valid instrument for discerning his will is his word it's important you cannot lay claims on the truth of god's word when you are in doubt if it is the will of god that means that you need to search the scripture to find out is it the will of god to prosper me is it the will of god to lift me is it the will of god to heal me is it the will of god for my ministry to flourish is it the will of god to cause me to become a voice over a territory when you know the mystery of his will then you can engage your faith and receive it and then number two wisdom we need the wisdom of god the bible says every house is built through wisdom and by understanding it is established a house is not built through desire desire only gives you the fortitude to create an atmosphere for the spirit of wisdom to come it says through desire a man having separated himself seeketh and intermeddled with all wisdom the desire brings about separation but it will take the word to administer wisdom listen the word of god is the wisest perspective of god concerning any issue the word of god presents the wisest perspective on all matters because there are times that you are in a strait between your intelligence and the word of god there are times you are in a strait between culture and the word there are times you are in a strait between your instincts and the word at that time you will have the confidence to lean on the word of god as touching or as as providing the wisest perspective no man ever fails following the word listen every time you are in doubt of the voice of god let the word of god be his voice because even if an angel comes to preach another gospel that defies the integrity of the word then let him be accursed the ministry of the word 
Many believers refuse the word. We want results. But the fortitude to be patient, to stay, to build, to know. It takes a lot of sacrifice. There is a spiritual labor to receive the word. That is the labor that the Bible enjoins that we have to enter our rest. Acts chapter 20, please. Quickly and verse 32. Acts chapter 20 and 32. It says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God, and then to the word of His grace, the word that is able to cause all graces to come towards you. It says, Which is able to build you up, uh -huh, and then give you an inheritance. Notice the operation of the word. You are commended to the word of and that the word operates first by building you up. The word does not just give you an inheritance. The word vets your capacity to receive that inheritance. And if you fall short of it, it first will build you up. Then deliver to you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. So you can know them that are sanctified by the inheritance they possess and demonstrate. And that the word of God is able to build you. Are we together now? The word is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance. I think it's Galatians 4 that says for an heir, as long as he is a child, he says he differeth not from a slave, though he be lord of all. So he is destined to walk in his inheritance, but the Bible says provided he is a child, void of understanding. He differed not. The results does not show any difference between the child and the slave, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed. So the word of God can wean us away from spiritual childishness and bring us into a point of maturity and then as a reward deliver to us our inheritance. Everybody say the word of God. So you can see a weak person Come Mike A weak person And standing as weak as he is And he's foolish enough to embrace the word of God Are we together now? The knowledge of his will The wisdom of God Spiritual understanding The Bible says these forces begin to walk in him And suddenly it begins to build him up It builds him by transforming his mind Recalibrating his understanding Giving him God's perspective So he is now put in a position Where he is able to rise above culture Rise above the sociological context of men His viewpoint becomes the word of God And then the Bible says to prove to you that he stayed in the school of the spirit He is given an inheritance Among the sanctified He's ranking And he's given an opportunity To transit states And you see him and know that I used to know this guy But now what has happened He has been built and given something I think it was day before yesterday Or yesterday I usually follow the news on channels Their online platform And I saw the president decorating I think the new inspector general of police and then I said this is it this is my message here for whatever reason you have been built then you are given something and with that comes new responsibilities privileges etc are we together now now what that man could not do whoever he is now he's able to do because he has been given something that's what the word of God does it takes you the way you are and begins to build you And the system of the word is that It builds from inside out This is where the carnal man Cannot discern the things of the spirit Because most people, listen carefully Most people seek to look At outward results very quickly And sometimes we try to manipulate The word by making Results for ourselves in the out No, it doesn't work that way There is a working of the spirit within you and my brothers and my sisters, when God perfects his work within you, the evidence must show. It will show in every area, it will show in your ministry and all of that. Let me tell you something about spiritual realities. If you have it, you have it. If it's not there, once you are doubting, is it really there? It means it's not there or it's still on its way reaching you. If it gets there, then it will show. It's true. Are we together now? The word is able to build you. That means one of the ways the devil is going to try to destroy you is to create 
whatever formula he can create to alienate you from contact with the world. And you will be surprised that one of the ways the devil can distract you is even to give you a Bible. You will think just because you are holding a Bible, he gives you a word. He can wrap you up in religion so that you are ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. You will continue to flatter yourself that just because your eyes continue to make contact with a, a book produced by Zondervan or White Taker House, you will mean that you are growing in the world. He says, ever learning. He saw the scribes and said, ye search the scriptures, for in them you think you will find life and you will not come to me. There are all kinds of ways the devil can distract us. Especially for we preachers. Because boy, ministry can make you so busy. And you will be searching the word, but you are just looking for a sermon. And you can array nice sermons. And get all kinds of sermons. You are instant as far as ministry is concerned. But as a person, the richness of the word is not in you. And remember our spiritual fortification in this kingdom is the formidability of the word of God that you have meaning that if the word of God is not rich in and around you your life is at a risk when life pushes you it will have to take the word content in you to find expression are we together now when the word is not at work in you you are going to be frustrated and discouraged because my brothers and my sisters like Pastor Alpha was sharing we are at times where men are not just saying based on the world system there is a casting down um, someone sent me a text about a funny way somebody stole a phone and I said he would have just begged they would have given him I mean why did you have to that's, that's, that's what hunger does Hunger can make women eat their children. Talk more of a fool. When Satan wants people to forget about God, he manipulates their belly. He manipulates the economy. He heats up everything to make sure people forget about God. Are we together now? But in the name of Jesus, it will be minus you. Some of you, what God will do, you will even be afraid to testify because of the kind of anger around the people who are not in the mood to hear anything God has done. And so you have to just leave and come and dance in the house of God because you will feel unfair because of the kind of testimony you have. Even you will feel sad for them. Not because you are being sarcastic. You are wondering, Lord, this is... And he says, you believed me and so you committed me. But I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able persuaded that he is able John chapter 15 and verse 16 I was preparing this and the Lord gave me a powerful revelation he said the word ordains you to be fruitful the word ordains you like you conduct an ordination service and you pour oil on a man and say from today brother abc you have become pastor this or whatever you are are we together now the bible says the word can coordinate a an ordination ceremony an ordination is a system of authorization and that the word like a minister can ordain you into a realm it says ye have not chosen me but i have chosen you the word speaking and ordained you to go and bring fruit a beautiful sister here stood as tiny as she was i was just smiling at her a uh, dear one who stood here that wonderful lady and she stood with her cabin crew license that's an ordination are we together yes if you try to harass her around an airport even if she's not employed yet she's able to tell you no 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 i'm a licensed this and that that means i have received the authorization because these gates are still there remember our old gates and so there is a license and it says i have ordained you i didn't just send you i ordained you ordained by the word where is your pass into the realm of increase and you bring the word 
God said, I will make you exceedingly fruitful. And the gate opens. There you go. And for someone, he comes, where, where is your past? And he says, I'm tired. And the gate said, turn around. Weariness is not a key for open doors. It takes the word. Where is your past for a new level of the anointing? Then you say, I will make you exceedingly fruitful. That nations shall come out of you and kings out of your loins. The word ordains. It is true. The word ordains. Let me indoctrinate you with this revelation. Get it. Ordained to bear fruit. Kabarako satire. That means whatever you are involved in looks at you. You come with a license. Ordained to bear fruit. I'm a music minister. Ordained to bear fruit. In the name of Jesus. That means there is a life giving factor in your songs. That must force them to reach the nations. An ordination happened through the word. Ordained to bear fruit. Not ordained to talk stories. Not ordained to explain. Ordained to produce results. Men of God hear this. The word of God is able to ordain you that you go and bring fruit not just go and get fruit to go and bring forth like a woman pregnant and then she brings forth something out of her, a child so I can send you alone as weak as you are and say look at the multitudes that God is sending you to I may not have naira and cover to give you but I commend you to the word of his grace and you feel weak in yourself you say look I, I'm unqualified and the word of God says hold on let me ordain you and the same way you know those days when they, had, when they ordained Anglican priests many things would happen those days we used to wear cassocks you know you wear the whole regalia from top it must touch the ground clean shoes well polished and all of that and you are so happy and um, they used to call us seminarians even the masquerades didn't flog us are we to guess we had masquerades that sometimes would come up to harass people we used to move in groups the masquerades would run around and dare not come near us because even the masquerade knows a priest from a that means that ordination creates immunity that Satan is running helter skelter he comes to a house and sees you clothed with the word it's an ordination and they tell the demon, go now. I say, you, you come and go. The word of God. Building fortification. So don't be surprised when a thousand falls by your side. And ten thousand by your right side. It looks so close. You are worried. God says, have you not heard that it shall not come nigh thy dwelling? Only will you stand and see. Watch the reward of the wicked. Ordained. To be fruitful john 15 and verse 16 ordained to be fruitful ordained to be fruitful if this is all you get tonight is worth it that you can walk around knowing that this fruitfulness thing i'm not getting it illegitimately or illegally i am ordained so as a man of god you go for a meeting you expect people to be healed you expect people to be delivered you expect that there be an outpouring of the holy spirit you expect revelations and signs and wonders and the moment you stand there and say praise the lord and the demons are flying out and liberating people is a token of your ordination it's proof that you came with the word you didn't send yourself sent by the word ordained to be fruitful if I'm a destiny helper to you and then I come and I was supposed to pass you because of the investment of the word upon you it has been ordained to make sure the graces come to you and that word will compel me to want to come and help you and support you thank you are we together now ordained to be fruitful ordained to be fruitful king of kings lord of lords let your kingdom reign in my life Adonai Adon, the Lord Adonai Let your kingdom come It's a prayer let your kingdom come 
Number two, the second key is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Not just the ministry of the Spirit, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The second key to being fruitful is engaging the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6. Popular but very powerful. Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Joshua Selman, saying, Hallelujah, not by might, otherwise some of us will not be strong enough, nor by power, but by not the Spirit, my Spirit, saith the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, that this fruitfulness will not be by might, that this ministry exploits will not be by might. Are we together now? By human empowerment, not by power, it says, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord, but by my Spirit. This miracle will not happen by might, nor by power. The testimonies that many of... Let me tell you this, let me tell you this. Truly speaking, and I submit to you, if you find your feet here, then you must testify. It's true. It's a grace. There's nothing to be angry about. It's a grace. We read there that God is able. Are we together now? Look at the gentleman that an angel called him, gave him this. If he didn't have a job, you would think he's lying. And he called the name of the place, you can go and verify. That the word comes, and just like somebody wanting to steal from you, the word continues to trail you until it surprises you. You know how a thief follows you. You, you think you are walking alone, but a thief is following you to steal your phone. This one is following you to make sure you are blessed. Did you not read in your Bible that there are two spirits called goodness and mercy and that they can follow men? They can follow you. Do you know, honestly, I, I pray that you believe what I'm saying and my brothers and my sisters, you will sit back and wonder at life. And you will become an evangelist by force Begging people to stop wasting their time And say look come come There is a fountain of living water The way you are going about it Is going to end you in frustration Come I have found When you encounter the world When you encounter the spirit You must be a testifier The woman said come see a man I know you are not interested but I am begging you that's the reaction to a man who becomes marvelously helped by God. You become too grateful. You, the, the compassion burns in you. And you can wake your family members and say, Look, let's be tired of this state in this house. There is a way out. The ministry of the Spirit. Isaiah 48 and verse 16. It will always be the Word and the Spirit. Come near unto me. Look up, please. Hear this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. From the time that it was, there I am. Read with me the remaining part. One to go. And now the Lord God uh -huh, and His Spirit had sent me. So how were you sent? The Word and the Spirit, the Lord God and His Spirit have sent me. The Lord God, His integrity and the Spirit have sent me. The Lord God and His Spirit have sent me to preach. The Lord God and His Spirit has sent me to go and get a job. The Lord God and His Spirit there are testimonies that if you don't believe the word, you will think people are lying. You will even be angry before the testimony finishes. I say, is it really true? The Lord God and His Spirit, not a politician, His Spirit. The last time the Lord and His Spirit came together 
that collision brought the recreation of the earth. Genesis chapter 1. Don't turn there. Just, just hang on here. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He says, now the earth was dark and void and formless. And then the Spirit of God hovered round the face of the waters. Verse 3, and Elohim said, light be. And the breathing of the Spirit and the Word ensured that God said it and he saw it. And he didn't just see it. You can see it and see what is bad. He saw it and he said, it is good. The Lord God and his Spirit. I have carried this consciousness for many years. And I pray, I don't know the formula God will use to make this real for you. But I truly pray that it happens to you. Especially for those of us who are in ministry. The Lord God and his Spirit. The Lord God and His Spirit. The Lord God and His Spirit. When God goes with you, worship Him, helped us, and sang the other time that when He holds your hands, everything becomes possible. I know we sang it as a song, but you must find a way of believing it. It is true. The Lord God and His Spirit. With God, all things. With God, your music ministry, possible. With God, even the enmity of all people that came from your background and know you and know your family and have kept prophecies in advance advance because they are so sure you will not rise. You will be just like your father and your mother and the Lord God and his spirit changing the writings, blotting out handwritings, rewriting truths. The Lord and his spirit. But for his spirit and his word you would fail. But the Lord and his spirit. You were supposed to fail but his rod and his staff comfort you. They lift you up. The Lord God and his spirit has sent me. Walk in that consciousness. I am not sent alone. Number one is that I am sent. Two, I am not sent alone. The arsenals that were sent with me is the word of God and his spirit. The Holy Spirit is powerful and wonderful. The Lord God and his spirit. When the spirit of God came upon a young lady called Mary, the Bible declares that supernaturally, she said, how shall these things be, seeing that I know not a man? And it says that the power of the highest, ah, the power of the highest, a woman who was not qualified to be fruitful, but when the power of the highest came upon her, she left the rest to that power. Hers was to believe and say, be it unto me. The dynamics of how that one happened, leave it to the intelligence of the spirit. The same way the power of God will overshadow you and you start something that is laughable and by the third month everybody sits in wonder and says, what has God done? The Lord God and His Spirit. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost leave the power path anointed Jesus of Nazareth with a person the Holy Ghost you can't do ministry without the Holy Spirit you can't understand the Bible without the Holy Spirit I can tell you this when it comes to understanding scripture there is very little of your creativity and education, quite honestly, that plays a role. You would need the illumination of the Spirit. Are we together? Elihu said, there is a Spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Almighty, there is a Spirit in man. There is a Spirit in man. Without that Spirit, there is no inspiration. There is a Spirit in man. And the inspiration, the breath of the Almighty make it men of understanding. You can't just understand. No. Understanding is the Holy Spirit living out His intelligence through your mind. So you sustain capacity that is not fair for humans to have. The same way a spirit possesses a man and begins to live out its characteristics through the faculty of that man, God is able to come upon you as the spirit of understanding and open up your fortitude to comprehend in an unusual degree and an unusual dimension. Bible study only aids it, but it does not create it. This one 
comes by the Spirit. Is God speaking to us tonight? Please give us John 16 and verse 12 and 13 and then we'll quickly go to the instructions that the Lord will have us. I have yet many things to say to you but ye cannot bear them now. Jesus is speaking about the ministry of the Holy Spirit now. How be it when he the spirit of truth that means I can trust every information that comes from him regardless of what my mind says the spirit of truth is come he will what guide you he will what does it mean to guide to coordinate you to make sure you are within the jurisdiction of truth he is able to coordinate you define boundaries so that you always stand in a position of truth that becomes an advantage. The Bible says he shall guide you into all truth. All truth. There is a body of knowledge. Remember the Bible says that we are a chosen nation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. Are we together now? It says we have been called forth to show the praises of him that has called us from darkness into his marvelous light not just light marvelous light an exact body of truth that qualifies you to possess a certain level of dominion within a dispensation is called marvelous light and the bible says the holy spirit can guide you can guide you you can read a book on finances you can read a book on leadership you can read a book on all of these things wonderful but when the holy spirit comes he will not just educate you he will guide you guide you guide you we are being guided by the spirit that is the help of god given to us guided the prophetic word came by the guidance of the spirit you can't sit down and just invent a word in I think you are saying this no he comes in the fifth month of the sixth year of this and that the word of the Lord came like a messenger sent from the throne to you and when it comes you receive it the evidence shows the Lord and his spirit has sent me the Bible says he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he shall show you things to come he will cause you to be ahead not by predicting by taking you there he will show you the holy spirit does not predict because he is god he will show you this is the next line this is the system of advantage for the next years that come in ministry in life finances etc Do you believe all I've been sharing? Blessed is she that believes, the Bible says, for unto her, not unto them, unto her, there shall be a performance. The performance is for those who believe. Believe, believe, peace is conviction and the action that you take based on that conviction. The ministry of the Spirit and the ministry of the word the ministry of the word without the spirit will make you religious the ministry of the spirit without the word will make you superstitious it will take the word and the spirit that's why those who pray and crave for the prophetic without a foundation of the word will many times double into spiritism and witchcraft that's not backsliding they are not necessarily fake but the word of god does not define the coordinates of balance for them and so you find out that they can double into what they themselves don't understand just because it's supernatural they will give the credit to the holy spirit whereas is the spirit of a man can be exposed to the influences of multiple spirits so it's possible for the holy spirit to coexist in operation with other spirits not necessarily in your spirit man they can find expression around your faculties and you produce varying outcomes So it's important for us to know 
the word of God cultivates in you the character, the understanding of God's modus operandi. So that even in the administration of the spirit, you are defined by the boundaries that brings balance and edification to the saints. It is dangerous. That's why you have a lot of people continue to pray, pray until they take them in the psychiatric ward. The doctors will tell you, have you seen many people get to the hospital just praying, praying? I'm not saying they are bad people, but sometimes people have gone to the mountain to pray and return back mad. You, you can't credit that kind of thing to God. They may be well-meaning. Don't be offended if your loved one has been like that. I'm saying that their spirits were so open. That space was supposed to be filled with the word. But see, every time Satan sees vacuum, he doesn't leave it alone. He's obsessed with space. If he finds space anywhere, space through ignorance, space through zeal without knowledge, he's a welcome guest, invited or not. So when you begin to build capacity, it's like borrowing vessels and leaving it empty. He will quickly come. Are we together now? And then those who continue to study scripture, they pride themselves because the knowledge of the word has an intellectual dimension. And the intellectual dimension itself is rewardable. Are we together now? As a theologian, as an intelligent person, when you speak to people who are educated, your ability to conjure thoughts that make sense, it makes sense to civilization, it makes sense to, to um, the, 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 the context of men. So you will think that just because you coordinated yourself well intellectually, that means you have delivered according to the Spirit. No. That's why Jesus looked at the scribes and the Pharisees and says, He err not knowing the Scripture. They thought it to be an insult. Because they believed they were better scripturally educated than Jesus himself. I mean, these guys had, they had the proofs of the entire Torah in their minds. They would recite it verbatim. And Jesus said, you are still in error. They felt offended. Don't insult us. We are the doctors of the law. Hopefully sometime this year, I will teach you how the Sanhedrin Council came. The Sanhedrin Council started with Moses. It was a system of eldership that was created for him to pour his spirit, to help him coordinate spiritual activities. And all of that error, religion, the spirit was out of it up until we get to the Roman government. We still have a Sanhedrin council, but the spirit left. Remember, there were 70 elders that were called. Come on now, are you not Bible students? That's where it started from. Now, in the New Testament, the one who instructed it, they have been so organized, they don't even know him again. Who are you? We have been in this ritual for decades. We inherited it from our fathers. And Jesus said, no wonder. No wonder. Just because a thing is very long does not mean God is there. Hallelujah. This year you must embrace the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is not for preachers. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is not for those who want power. You know, that's the description that we have in church. You want power, they say, go and watch Benny Hinn. Go and watch this, go and watch that so that you get power. No, the Holy Spirit was given us an advantage, the advantage of the believer. Hallelujah. Right where you are seated, I want you to pray in one minute. Lord, I open myself to your word. I'm tired of shadow boxing. I truly open up myself to your word, the ministry of your word, and the ministry of the Spirit. I open up myself to the ministry of your word. Let your word culture me. Let your word train me. Let your word mentor me. Please pray. I commend you to the world. I commend you to the world. I commend you to the word of His grace that is able to give you, is able to give you. I commend you. 
to the word of his grace it is able to build you up fruitfulness I have ordained you to go and bring forth fruit Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, very quickly, I want you to listen to some instructions, seven of them. Bishop Oyedepo said, We walk by common sense, we run by principles, but we fly by instructions. The ones who produce pilots and work in the aviation industry, they are called instructors. Are we together now? The humility to constrain yourself to God's instructions. Every time a prophet came bringing the word of the Lord to a person, a family, he came with instructions. And all those who were humble enough to hearken to the instructions, saw all kinds of signs and wonders happen to them. Instructions. Can you pray one minute and say, Lord, give me the heart. Give me the heart to not argue with your instructions. My son, he says, attend unto my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. He says, do not let them depart from your heart. They are life to those who find them. Please pray. You are beautiful in all your ways. Lift your voice and pray. You are beautiful in all your Lord, I delight in your instructions. I delight in your instructions. You are beautiful in all your Hallelujah. Please write this down. Listen, I want you to write it in a way that you will always be able to see don't just squeeze it and congest it somewhere if you need to use a fresh page for it write it down not as a ritual but as a guide god is determined to help us experience fruitfulness and we're starting off by receiving these words from him are we together now the lord calls moses to go up the mountain are we together now? And while he's up on the mountain, many things began to happen. And a finger came from heaven. Is that true? And the finger began to write on the rock, carved the rock, and wrote certain instructions. And he said, carry that instruction. Go and give the people that this is what will guide them to be a distinct people. Yes, that is the old covenant, the law, but the principle is still the same. One of the things we receive up the mountain with God is that we allow his finger to write, written by God's own hand, that these are the precepts. Remember the grace to walk in them is already supplied. So he gives you, walk by this. There is no blessing in the spirit that does not have conditions attached to them. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and when you read verse 1 it says it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day then it says that you shall be set up on high above every nation all other nations and these blessings will come upon you to overtake you then it begins to list them it shall come to pass if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe Pay attention. Number one, 
the first divine instruction for us for this year be intentional about your spiritual growth and progress instruction number one be intentional about your spiritual growth and progress be intentional the key word there is intentional don't just leave it up to God to say Lord if you want me to grow you will do it you have to be intentional the same way you are intentional about cooking you take the rigor of going to the market and nothing will stop you not even your hunger you get to the market and patiently search out everywhere till you find the ingredients you go back home time is already gone the meal may take an hour or two but you are intentional about making sure that there is a meal in the pot that's how you must approach your spiritual life we are living listen to me in times where the moment you are careless with your spiritual life you will pay for it you have to be intentional write it down let me just buttress quickly on it place priority on your time with the word place priority on your time in prayers place priority on your time in corporate fellowship i say it again place priority still buttressing on point one on your time with the word your time in prayers and your time in corporate fellowship these are spiritual bailout systems these are spiritual strategies to keep us up and doing regardless of the storms and the vicissitudes of life the lord told me this be intentional many of us have never truly honestly grown in the spirit There are people who truthfully speaking under God never read their Bibles. Doesn't mean they don't open it. They open it only on Koinonia. Just look at it and you are busy. You just close it and say I will read it later on. It's an attack. Every time you are neglecting the word, remember the example I gave about a body. The water is reducing from 70% to 30 to 20 until you begin to choke spiritually. The word content is important. Be intentional about your spiritual growth and progress. Place priority. Invest time with the word. Let me advise many of us here who are working class, you have businesses or you have jobs. Please sit down with God and design a strategy for your spiritual growth. You will never have time that you didn't create. Did you hear what I said? You will never have time, thank you, that you did not create. You will have to create and make time. Anything you don't create time for, there is no time for it. You eat because you create time for eating. You go on a job because you created time for it. If you don't create time for God in your life, there will not be time for God. God is not about to add one minute to 24 hours. We are all given that and that's all we have per day. You have to create time. For some of us, it may mean trusting God for grace to flog out the spirit of slumber from your life. If your day is obviously occupied, then you have to train your spirit man to be awake and invest in the world. All of us may not have equal time every day, but please trust God for grace to create time create time create time create time oh how i love your law they are my meditations all day long let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart embrace the word there was a very popular story of smith wigglesworth it was said if you went to his house you would almost be bored because all you will be doing is reading scriptures they will open the Bible, you will share, then you close it, just laugh over, and then you say, let's do it again. And then you open the Bible, even in his photo, you see him with a small Bible holding it. No wonder he was from a cobbler, became one of the apostles of faith. The word of God built him up, gave him an inheritance. 
If you have salary minus the word of God, you are in trouble. If you have more degrees minus the word of God, you are in trouble. If you have more influence minus the word of God, you are in trouble twice. For even contending for influence minus the word. Anything minus the word is not just zero, it's trouble. Be intentional about your spiritual growth and progress. For some of us, you have not yet agreed on a place for prayer with God. I mean personal prayer, not just Tuesday prayer with prayer band and prayer here in Koinonia. You need to go the extra mile. Some of us have roommates and friends and of course you don't disturb and distract people. If you trust God and cry, the Holy Spirit, you know, this, the way believers see God now is very disturbing. People went out of their ways to found, there used to be in the campus those days, there's a place many of you don't know, it was called Lontenis Court. People would come, some under the tree, some near a chair, they just pile a chair and you are passing. Sometimes you are passing, you want to quickly go and eat yourself. You hear somebody just praying there. No, that was not near here. This is me and God. But now, this obsession for convenience, please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying God wants us to be comfortable. But let me tell you the truth. If it is God you want to do business with, trust God for grace to conquer an excessive appetite for convenience. People used to pray in the rain, 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 folly. They would lie down and say, let it finish on me. And God says, you do this to express your passion. Not because that's the activity that gets God to you. But it is a token of your hunger and desperation. Please find a place to pray. Find a place to pray. There's too much distraction in our world. And don't get me wrong again. I know that I'm talking to a larger body of people. Don't get me wrong. I don't mean to be sarcastic. Manage social media. Are we together? Manage this. Some of us, even if there is nothing, you have to text. You have to check something. Ah, let me check who is there now. Those things can eat up time. Time will continue to pass. Trust God for grace to stay with the word. Ah, is there any problem while you are praying like this? No. This is the year of extraordinary fruitfulness. The rod of Aaron did not just board. It was kept somewhere. Location mattered. Not anywhere. There was a place it was kept. Samuel was lying down close to the ark when he had the voice of God. Anywhere is not where God meets with people. God is everywhere. But no sensible man meets with anybody just anywhere. You don't hold meeting at a junction where a mechanic is fixing a car and you say, come for a board meeting. No. Atmosphere matters with God. It's true. If there is no place in your house, convert your toilet to an atmosphere. It's not insulting. At least nobody will disturb you when you are there. And you cry your heart, Oh God, open my eyes. There is one thing I can see that will change my life. What is it? It's not just to pray and then you just pray and then say amen and you are going. God has not responded. Were you alone? You didn't believe he was there? Day that wait doesn't mean day that fast. It means day that lie down there and say, Lord, I'm not going anywhere. God honors the faith of waiters. I have benefited from waiting. It's not every time you are talking and praying. Download worship tunes like this. Come and meet the worship team to set something for you like this. And all you are doing is just lying down and soaking in that presence. And then his word will come. He will send one word to you. And it will light upon your family and your generation. He sent a word to Jacob. Listen, we win by the strategies we receive from the Spirit. There is something I must see to win. Joshua knew this. And he refused to move. Until the circumcision was done. And here comes the captain of the host of God. He came to deliver the strategy. This is what you are going to do. Had the angel not come, Joshua would have been surprised at what Jericho would do for him. You know, the story makes it cheap. Cheap victory is because of the strategy God gave. Not because the matter is not serious. 
when God comes, he has the ability to deflate every mountain like a balloon. And he say, where is the mountain before the river there? Please learn to stay. Learn to stay. Learn to stay. Gentlemen, you want to be established. It's not all about just reading, reading. I must make it. I must hustle. You need to lock yourself and say, Lord, one thing is needful. Open my eyes. What is it? It's painful to run around and merry-go-round and find out you still did not get it. His presence has value. Stay. You're a man of God. Stay. Don't just go around sending text messages. I know you may be well-meaning. Please invite me. You, you've seen me preach the other day with promise. The other, the other day I preached with Pastor Femi. I, I think you, by now you know I'm a man of God. No. No. Stay. And let there be a walking of the Spirit. It may be for days. It may be for months. But let me tell you, when you truly stay with God and He comes to you, you will be surprised what your life will become. Number two, let's hurry up. Be intentional, second instruction, about building capacity, underlying capacity, through proper exposure and useful word-based information. I will take it again. Be intentional about building capacity through proper exposure. You can underline the word proper. Exposure is a double-edged sword. Proper exposure and useful word-based information. There are all kinds of information on the internet that propose success propose a good life there is a maze of ideas swimming all around the internet attempting to profess solution to the various predicaments of men but heaven and earth will pass away the bible says but only his word abides forever whatever information you grant access to your life like a drug it must be vetted on the platform of the world if it does not pass that test my brother and my sister don't waste your time because you will still go through the rigor of taking it out again let it never even get there in the first place capacity Second Kings chapter 4 and 1 to 6. Don't turn there, just write it down. The challenge of the woman was an issue of capacity, not oil. The oil had potentials, but the vessel was small. So the oil reduced to assume the shape of the vessel. And the prophet identified it. He said, I know what is wrong. It's not necessarily a need for more oil. He says, go and borrow vessel. He said, borrow not a few. And she shot herself and the oil continued to pour. And when there was no more vessel, the oil stopped. God blesses us according to his perception of our capacities. Matthew 25, he gave unto one five talents, two talents, one, not according to his love for them according to their several abilities and in the end i have a teaching on this i will tell you that all the five people were tested because the man with five had the challenge of pride and overconfidence to overcome the fact that he had the highest his challenge at his level would be pride and overconfidence the man at two had the challenge of jealousy and ingratitude to overcome knowing there was someone higher than him he needed to be tested there the guy with one it is clear that it's even messy that brought that one because later on you see that his anger and none of the two spoke about the other person but the last one spoke about the rest in anger God tested them and he was right. The end of the story tells us. There are people who no amount of praying and fasting will ever increase their talents to three or four. God sees that your most profitable spiritual and destiny position is two based on your capacity. So it's not just the issue of God lifts me. Capacity. Is God speaking to us? God wants to enlarge our capacity. And many times our minds are small. The Bible says, Now unto him, Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. 
who is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all we ask or think ask or think that means your thinking and your asking holds the same value in the spirit you can ask something that your mind tells god don't matter, don't bother don't answer again god answers both your prayer and your thinking your mindset also sends prayer requests to the spirit i can be well meaning but koinonia may never be able to rise and surpass that mindset hear what the bible says that god is able to do all these things but is limited by the power working in us like tap from water from the dam limited by the channel given to it it can come out as a drop in a bucket whereas it has potentials to fill that bucket in one minute the mighty things that god is able to do is limited by the power that works in us please prophesy to someone seated to you say expand capacity pastors we need to expand capacity men of god businessmen expand your mind there is too much smallness there is too much smallness this is the challenge of africa we are superstitious about everything we are small small businesses small ministry small lives everything small we spiritualize our mediocrity and put together factors that continue to endorse it it says kings shall come out of you nations out of you refuse to be small it's not a blessing herein is our father glorified that you bear much fruit you need to expand capacity not to acquire things oh i must buy a new this a new that mm -mm. expand your mind and your mind will bring everything that will fill up that space are we together number three third instruction be determined to live by faith be determined the third instruction from god to us if we truly are going to walk in the experience of extraordinary fruitfulness be determined my brothers and my sisters to live by faith for the sake of reference write this down you don't have to project it Romans chapter 1 17 Romans 1 17 Galatians 3 11 Hebrews 10 38 Romans 1 17 Galatians 3 11 Hebrews 10 38 all these scriptures say the just shall live by faith four of them in all in the Bible one in the Old Testament and one of the rendition says the just shall live by his faith in any case the just lives by faith there is an obsession for results and evidence even before we start the vision speaks in the end you must believe god enough are you getting what i'm saying now the bible says to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace you have to trust god you have to believe god death and life and let me tell you this it is true that out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks so if the word of god is not rich in your heart your mouth will continue to speak poisonous things against your destiny there are many of us who our communications continue to minister woes to our lives we always speak of weakness we all speak of this and it's not the issue of confession Jerry. and let me say this man man is suffering man, don't do that don't do that the bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue proverbs 18 and verse 21 it says they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof death is like a tree life is like a tree your mouth is like the rope you use to fetch them you can eat death you can eat life death and life are in the power of the tongue make up your mind no matter what it is there's no food to eat in the name of jesus it is well i know god is faithful i know god is faithful lord i thank you i know you are making all things new ah your mother is sick are you aware she's been sick since last week in the name of jesus the word of god is working in my family let me tell you carnal people will insult you and say all these church people and this your god gave us brain be careful people's brains have sent them to their graves it's been sending people for a long time
Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the blessed of the Lord say so. Huh. And so you speak. The righteousness that is by faith speak it. And you declare. You lock yourself and you are declaring. In one room that there are holes here and there. Rain falling everywhere in the name of Jesus is my year of extraordinary fruitfulness. I receive divine ideas. Lord, I thank you. All grace working for me. And someone just calls you and says, I'm about to leave Zaria. Uh, is it okay if you stay in my house? He says, I, I, I didn't get you. And God says, remember, all grace, pick the key, it's yours. And you tell somebody, say, are, are you sure that that's all that happened? All grace, all grace, all grace. Believe God. Oh, I may not have money in my pocket, but in the name of Jesus, I'm receiving. Remember, I'm teaching the true riches. God is putting something in my life that will draw resources. Gentiles, ministry looks like it's rising and falling, and you stand and speak in the name of Jesus Christ. Christ is being exalted. He draws all men by himself. I receive the strategies. I receive wisdom. I have access to his will, to wisdom, to spiritual understanding. I am fruitful. The church is fruitful. Let's minimize the time we spend programming woes to our destiny. Convert it to times where you speak and create realities. Are we together? Beware of naysayers. Our society is full of naysayers. They will always laugh you over. You finish koinonia and go back home and they laugh. Say, cry. Apostle can preach. Oh. Ah, ah. See him quoting scripture anyhow. I wish it was easy. You see, those kinds of people may be well-meaning, but they will innocently destroy you. That's why Abraham had to keep some members of his household down, because he was about to climb the mountain to do something that was unusual. And sometimes people can be too innocent to allow you obey God. They can be too innocent to allow the word prevail. Compassion can be used by Satan to stop you. He can manipulate the compassion of men around you. You want to fast and they say, ah, bah, you are overdoing it. Even me, I'm touched by your hunger. And you say, really? And then you stop. Whereas the last fast was when God would have come. Live by faith. Number four. This is a serious one now. The fourth word of the Lord to us all. Strive by the Spirit. I don't know if strife is a good word. If it's not, find a word that is most appropriate for you. Strive by the Spirit to be exceptional in character and lifestyle. Write it down, please. The fourth instruction to us from God, if we are going to experience extraordinary fruitfulness, strive by the Spirit. That's why I wrote by the Spirit. To be exceptional, underline exceptional, in character and lifestyle. I wrote some things here. Defeat behavioral limitations. Defeat the grip of past failures. Defeat the limiting grip of culture and background on your character. Defeat behavioral limitations. Defeat the grip of past failures. All of these things are like claws that hold on to you. And will never allow you to strive to the place of destiny as ordained by God. Defeat the limiting grip of culture and background on your character. Strive by the Spirit to be exceptional in character and in lifestyle. That's number four. Make up your mind that this year and then as always... That in the name of Jesus, by the Spirit, you will be flawless in character, in lifestyle, in communication. That your words will minister life. That you will be, you will be flawless. Your life will be an, a true living epistle. Say amen. amen. There are two Bibles you always carry. The first is the one in your house. The second is you. You will always carry two Bibles. 
you carry this and carry yourself to your life must depict a character that is worthy of emulation we don't like this but this is an instruction from God I see the way many of you are looking at me strive by the spirit my brothers and my sisters be exceptional in character we live in a society where character doesn't seem to hold so much value again but the Bible says you are the light of the world you are a city set on a hill neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel that in the name of Jesus your character will preach to someone to be saved are we together now if the only way to evangelize is to verbalize it then something is wrong the flawlessness of your character can make somebody say let me follow your God and if you believe that with me say amen let me just interject here be careful what society calls normal be careful what society calls normal be careful what society calls normal you must have flawless character you know in all fairness i look at some of our younger ones right now and i am surprised at the level of lawlessness disrespect dishonor and there is a programming by babylon are we together now yes i was talking to my my boys this this evening and i was teaching them i said look guys if you continue to grow like this you will be great people one day god will trust you with your own ministries and all of that you may look weak but keep striving and i was challenging them because uh, permit me to use the word their generation of young men are very proud and arrogant if they can kick you and match your feet they say i match you somebody fell in my meeting that qualifies you to be a fellow man of god there is a lot of pride listen let me tell you the moment acknowledging grace becomes a problem for you it's a sign that your life is under attack lot of pride lot of pride many of us don't respect elders again i was teaching i think i was having a meeting with the worship team or so and then i told them something and i want to challenge you to have it is the power of creeds creed c-r-e-e-d a creed is a representation of your conviction in a format that is easy to become a stronghold in your mind we were trained as children with creeds the national pledge is a creed many christian schools had creeds some of you remember now a creed is not a tradition if done well it is a system of internalizing a conviction i was trained in the anglican seminary and we had what we call the apostles creed these are creeds that is like a statement of your conviction these things are not there again till today great corporations in the world have creeds when they have their board meetings they, they chant it sometimes it's almost like it's magical this is what we stand for this is this is that to deliver quality product in an efficient way in you know the most available time you see mature people millionaires with their ties becoming like children creeds are powerful you must have a creed that defines your life who are you you must have a creed that defines your family you must have a creed that defines your business you must have a creed that defines your ministry it doesn't have to be for public consumption who are you what is the worship team who are you what do you stand for what do you deliver to koinonia creeds are powerful we have lost this ancient mystery and many people do not know what they live for and stand for again you call a pastor and say what do you do he say i'm preaching the gospel say, what does that mean say don't, don't just I, I'm, I'm preaching the gospel no Great. let's hurry up that's number five right make up your mind 
to be responsible. Write it down. I pray in the name of Jesus that the grace that follows this word will fall on as many who need to get this this year. Make up your mind that this year I will be responsible. The word responsible comes from the word responsive. Respond. Are we together now? Don't be inactive. Don't act like the situation does not demand your attention. Our society is, is brewing a group of very, very sadly irresponsible people on all fronts. To be responsible means to have a sense of obligation. To have a sense of obligation towards life, towards your family, towards your destiny. A sense of obligation. To be responsible means to be duty bound. You have to be duty bound. Don't allow the things that are your responsibilities and act as if it does not matter. No. You are a family man. This is the year to be responsible over your family. Spiritually, financially, intellectually. To coordinate the activities within the family to reflect Christ. You are a businessman, you are a, you are a ministry, you are a career person, be responsible. And this goes as, as an added encouragement to our brothers. Let's trust God for grace to be responsible. Responsive. Responsive. Someone will have to get up and be interested in making things happen. Don't say they will do it. No, be the day that will do it. I know God will send somebody to help me. God has been helping us like that. The rent will expire by October, but I know whatever it is, at least between now and April, I know that rent will come. Abba, is it not God that sits in heaven? And you sit down and stroll yourself until the time reaches, and then you turn around and find out that you are bankrupt, and it weighs you down. Be responsible. Be responsible. Be responsible over your life. Be responsible. Don't just be roaming around town anytime. In the morning, in the afternoon, you run around. You are a man of God. You are just kicking stones on the street and holding sugar cane in your hand and just smiling. You are not acting responsible. If you don't have anything to do outside, go back to your house and sit down. Build your mind. Are we together? You don't leave your house and come back by 1 a.m. in the morning with no explanation. No apology to anybody. Open the door for me. Who are you? I'm, I'm back home, my friend. Are you stupid? This is whose house? No. Let's be responsible. Say in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to be responsible. Wash your clothes. Clean your wardrobe before koinonia. Don't start looking for what to wear five minutes to koinonia. And you find out all the clothes are dirty. Who did you leave it for to wash? You are a young man. Don't act as if you are already rich. You can outsource people to help you, but you have not made the investment and, and, and the impact that can allow people to come and wash for you. So you bend down and wash. If your clothes are dirty by 1 a.m., get up and wash. I wash everything. You see a young man... You are a young man and there are piles of clothes. You are a young lady. There are piles of plates. You are not responsible. Did you hear what I said? You are not responsible if you do that. You have to settle down and be serious. If you set a task, discipline yourself to do it. Punish yourself in righteousness when you carelessly miss out on your tasks. Don't sit down and just forgive yourself anyhow. You were supposed to read a book and say it doesn't matter. No, you will not go far. This is a price for the crown that you so desire and so admire. God is not a magician. He doesn't make charms. There is a pathway. Number six, quickly. Two more and we're done. This is a very serious one and I want you to listen to it. When God brought this, I prayed this even for my own self, even before writing it. Resist the pressure of pride competition and vainglory very serious one 
Resist the pressure. This is the sixth instruction. Resist the pressure of pride, competition, and vainglory. Proverbs chapter 16, please, and verse 18. Let me tell you something. In my little life, I, I am yet to know the one thing that destroys faster than pride. Please, we must trust God. you know why I'm saying this? Because we are going to see results that will dumbfound us this year. And chances are that when those results come, our hearts can be haughty and can be lifted. Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. When Satan wants to throw you, he sends pride. He sends a haughty spirit. You must resist it. Society can massage you into pride. Do you know what pride is? Coming to a position where you fail to see, like Vashti, that you are all you are because of God. Vashti never apologized to the king, even when she embarrassed him. The Bible has no record of Vashti coming to say, King, I'm sorry. No. There was no record. Even when Vashti was banished, you see a relationship between Vashti and Mordecai and Haman. It was very clear that the king was weak because he didn't want to banish her. And pride goes before a fall. Let me tell you this. I have seen in my little life people rise to the sky and crash down in dishonor. With all due respect, there are men of God around the world that at one point or the other, God helped them marvelously. And for some reason, their hearts became haughty. And now it's almost as if you make reference to their past. Reject pride. It's something I have asked God to give me grace to, to fight because it's very easy to be proud. You know, people come here and you see them acknowledging Apostle Joshua Selman, this and that. Thank God for those things. But let me tell you, pride can kill. Pride is like an arm robber. It can be dangerous. It can come into your house like a, an arm bandit and strip you of everything that represents honor in your life. Are we together? Let's look at one scripture and we're done. Proverbs 29 and verse 23. Resist the pressure of pride, competition, and vainglory. A man's pride shall do what? Bring him down. But honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. What will uphold the, the humble? Honor. There is a relationship between humility and honor. God gives you increase and gives you a platform. And he said, Lord, I thank you. But may it never enter my heart. And while men are clapping, God says, no problem, receive the applause. But let them know. Don't just say, Lord, me and you, we know. Let them know that you are the doer. And God says, you do this for me, step into a new level. A new level of increase. This humility check is something that I want you to do for the rest of your life. Not just for this year. Two points under this. Embrace true humility as a lifestyle and a value system. Embrace true humility as a lifestyle and a value system. One of the ways that the Lord helps me to stay humble is by always giving me visions of the past. If for any reason you forget where God brought you from, then you are already on your way to destruction. The, do you know Esther almost made the same mistake of Vashti? That's to tell you that it, the, the seat itself had tendencies. It was not about Vashti. It was about the inability. If Mordecai was the bailout for Esther, otherwise she would have followed the route of Vashti. It was only a matter of time. And Mordecai said, remember. Remember. Madam, Remember. That's how one day God will see you when people are clapping for you. You know, when people clap for me and send me text messages, I receive hundreds of text messages every day. 
and over 80 to 85 percent of them are people from different nations of the world your message has blessed me apostle of the nations apostle of this elijah of our time moses of our time and i know that they are just innocently trying to say you are a great man and we appreciate you and i look at those things and i look at myself in the mirror i said mr man the day you become proud, the day you let this enter your head and forget you were once a young boy confused and scattered that God took by his grace and mercy. The day you allow the bounties of the palace to make you forget that once upon a time you begged for food, that day you disqualify yourself from the flow of grace. God truly opposes the proud. I have seen this wreck the lives of pastors. I've seen this wreck the lives of business people. I've seen this wreck the life of people generally. There used to be this song. I will not forget, Lord, your benefits. How can I forget? I will not forget, Lord, your benefits. I will never forget, I will not forget, Lord, you can be. Let it not be that when you have built houses, and you have done this and that, you will say, my power and the might of my hand has given me these riches. He said, but thou shalt remember. It means you can forget. Influence can make you remember God, but forget his faithfulness. Money can make you remember God, but forget his faithfulness. Ah, God, may I never get there. Oh, I'm asking you in the presence of your people. Let it not happen to me. If it means closing doors, close it. i rather remain at the level that will keep me useful than to get to a level where you become Ichabod. Oh, you once were anointed. You once were great. A haughty spirit is like pouring oil on steps. The terrible thing with pride is that your fall is seen by all. Pride is so deadly, it supervises your fall and you must touch the ground. Please pray one minute and curse the spirit of pride. Some of them, this pride has destroyed some of our family members. It has destroyed many people. Pride has a track record of destruction. Shalakato sabra hasidekata. Clot yourselves with humility. Koinonia, this is God's word for us. We are a ministry that God has helped. But be careful. He has made the list among us like David. But be careful. Lest you begin to scorn at other ministries. Let you begin to scorn at other men of God. Scorn at other people's achievements. No, that's not the spirit of the Christ. Humility, O oh God, adorn my life. I am truly nothing without you. Never be ashamed to let the world know you are nothing without him. I will never forget Hallelujah. Powerful secret. Every time you are praying with God, cry that prayer. Lord, bless me. Oh, Sam, you are an exceptional worshiper. In fact, let me tell you how people are talking. In fact, all these musicians in Nigeria, they are not up to one tenth of you. Now, at first, you will resist it. Consistency is what creates conviction, not truth. Anything consistently repeated to you becomes a conviction, including flattery. Joshua Selman, Sam, ah, you are this and that and that and that. And first Sam says, now have a glory be to God. And later he says, it's true. It's true. Alexander the way, you are Elijah. No, no, glory be to God. But it's true. Taylor, make me. Elijah's regalia. Let me shut down rain and this and God said no. The way I love you, but I'm consistent to my values. 
and not even my love for you will stop it. Not every destruction is caused by Satan. God himself can bring men down. Trust God for grace this year. Koinonia, let this be a trait in us that people don't have to say you attend Koinonia just by you chanting tongues that they look at your life and say this person is no this humility we can trace you to this ministry are we together you are a boss in office or you are this clothe yourself with humility towards your workers many bosses act as if they will never leave the job that's why when it's time to retire the members are happy they are praying and the moment the people retire loyalty is not there again let people miss your presence so much they go out of their way to want to see you the reason is because you demonstrate do you know the kind of message that comes when you are great yet humble I have met people with all humility our daddy prof here every time I see our daddy here truly speaking our daddy is one of the inspirations that has kept me humble alongside the leaders of CGC and I say this with all my heart I have learned humility from them genuine truthful humility when people who have gone ahead of you don't see a reason to say anything it should bring you back to your knees to say Lord help me let the little that God has done and is doing around the world through this ministry not get to us and, and I'm saying this even for the workers be careful because sometimes we can respect those above us but show our pride to those below us you are still proud you are just still fully proud but you are proud avoid it embrace humility it's a prayer that i pray all the time let no amount of influence let no amount of lifting those of us who are in ministry i do this in the open because it's true but i do it too so that you will learn because the truth is that some of us have not gone far we have not started anything quite honestly but the, the haughtiness of heart will not allow us to humble ourselves and learn Music ministers, learn this too. Because music ministers are some of the people who pride can swallow them overnight. One song can read somewhere and everybody becomes very proud and no. The moment people are clapping for you, turn and join them to clap for the one who without you are nothing. Take God out of koinonia. You will think we have been holding a charm all through because God is the secret I say this in the open what I'm saying will be millions of people around the world will be listening to it I will still say it after 10 years it is I told God something I prayed a prayer and I said oh God it's a prayer I cried to God and he answered I said never show me the full extent of my impact just show me a little and that's enough for me in other words let me never know how far I'm impacting lives. Do you know why? Because our human nature, when you see the extent of what you are doing, sometimes you can sit down and beat your chest and say, Ah, God, boy, you tried for me. So that you will always remain on your knees and say, I am nothing without you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Please learn this. The moment you do this, the devil will tell you you are falling your hand. But God will say, No, that's how we climb the ladder. We climb the ladder of honor on our knees, not our feet. Number seven, be intentional about walking in love. That would be the last instruction from the Spirit. Be intentional about walking in love. John 13, 34 and 35. Very powerful scripture. John, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another. Everybody say one another. Say it again, one another. As I have loved you. Are you seeing that? You are, it's not only husbands and wives that are given the mandate to love as Christ loved the church, but even 
the brethren you are given a standard to love and you are not at liberty to influence that standard god says that you love one another to the degree i have loved you this is true agape as christ loved the church so you love one another first john chapter 3 first john chapter 3 we are going to read four verses 11, 14, 16 and 18 First John 3, quickly please Is God speaking to us For this is the message Listen carefully So there is a message coming from God now That we have heard from the beginning What is the message? That we should love one another I have discovered that in the body of Christ We love God a lot But the problem is loving ourselves and many people love God simply because they can't see Him. The same way you love someone on social media that you have not seen. Oh, you are such a you are such a kind fellow. And the person at the other side is having his his brother saying, If I have a brother like this, may the world perish. And you are there saying he's a kind fellow. The day you meet and say you are the one. <laughs> And this is the message that we heard from the beginning that we should love one another. Verse next, the, the verses I gave you 14. We know, listen, listen, listen. We know that we have passed from death to life. How? Not because we pray in tongues, not because we have apostolic and prophetic ministries, because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abided in death roommates hello workmates hello men of god hello family members hello brethren god is speaking to us god forbid that my mother god forbid that my sister god forbid that my brother i hate thee in fact let let him even die sir <laughs> The Bible says it's abiding in death. Next verse. Hereby perceive we the love of God. Uh huh. Because he laid down his life. Now, this is the sacrifice dimension of love. God is not, God is not hiding it from you that your love will in many regards require sacrifice. Because human beings are human beings. That's all we are. He says we ought to lay down our lives for who not for a pastor the brethren parents love your children i know they may not be perfect but love them don't curse and make wars uh -uh. children love your parents workers or superiors in office love your subordinates Men of God, love your members. Don't use them. Love them genuinely. Enough to pay any price under God, if need be, to serve them. Hallelujah. We ought to lay our lives for the brethren. The last verse. My little children, let us love in word. Let us not love in word, neither in tongue but in deed and in truth i love you genuinely truthfully ask god he will tell you there are pastors who love those who give them seats so if i see you compass if i see you holding an envelope i love you if i see you giving me a lift i love you come darling if i see you coming to stand and hoping i'll give you anything the way i will eye you you see that now no. we must love this is the challenge with many ministries the pastors love the rich and hate the poor they love those who give them this and so you turn members into psychophants and those who do not have think there's no place for them whether you're a child of the rich whether you're a child of the poor whether you're a child or whatever, the mandate of the shepherd is to love genuinely and truthfully. Are we together? Either we are lying about this thing or we are sincere. 
When God sees your heart of love, He will send a sheep to you and says, Go, let that man be your pastor. Let that man be the man of God over you. He sustains the kind of love required for the kind of life and background and past you are coming from. Let us love. You cannot claim to love God that you have not seen when your fellow man that you have seen, the love is not there. Let me tell you this. I have grown more because of love than because of prayer. I have grown more because of love than because of Bible study. I have learned and last year the Holy Spirit spoke this to me. The hallmark of transformation is love, not knowledge. Are we together now? Are you learning this? We are going to pray. Thank you. We must be intentional about love. Intentional. Prophesy to yourself that in the name of Jesus, the love of God is rich towards you, to others, to everyone. Whether they favor you or not, love, reach towards all men. This is a true character of the Christ. And then you will see power, you will see grace, you will see influence, you will see trust. God will give you things beyond your wildest imagination because you love the brethren. Departments. Love yourselves. No workers fighting themselves. No. Competition. No. I love God. And I love what I'm doing. And I love those there. Human beings are imperfect. It's not news. It's not news today. That all of us are imperfect. But it's no justification for lack of love. You are mandated. Instructed to love as a command. Are you praying? Allah subra has kadebe This is the message we have heard. These seven instructions the Lord giving us becomes the key to extraordinary fruitfulness. You walk by these truths, you will be surprised at what your life will become. God will bring honor, multiplied glory, grace, lifting to your life. I know the light. I know the light. Yes, I know the light. I know the light. I love the light. I love the light. I love the light. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. Please forgive me. It's my intention to really work on our timing this year. But in one minute, just join all these seven requests and say, Lord, the grace, release it upon me. Lift your voice and pray. Quickly open it. You can open your book and just look at it quickly. Pray. Mention me, Lord, I receive grace. Lord, I receive grace. Are you praying? My grace has been a Malanda. Malanda. Mention it one by one. Lord, I'm intentional about my spiritual growth. I receive grace for capacity. No more excuses. I walk by faith. I walk by faith. The limitation of the senses will not impede your program in my life. Lord, I declare that this year I am exceptional in character. I am exceptional in lifestyle, even by the Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ. 
declare, Lord, I receive grace for responsibility. No more carelessness. I take responsibility over my destiny, over my family, over my children. Pray. Lord, I resist pride. I resist the pressure for competition. I resist the pressure for vain glory. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, I embrace humility, the character, the loneliness of mind. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Finally, pray for love. 2019 is the year that I love the brethren. Regardless of church, regardless of denominational affiliation, regardless of disparity and differences in revelations, we may be different in all this. But Lord, I receive grace. The spirit of hatred, the spirit of sarcasm, the spirit that rejoices at the downfall of others. In the name of Jesus, it lose my life. I decree and declare, I walk in love. I walk in love. As a man of God, I walk in love. As a lecturer, I walk in love. I don't delight at the failure of my students. As an employee, I walk in love. I don't hate my superiors. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm going to speak over our lives. That will be the final thing. But very quickly, let me give an opportunity. This is our first service for the year. And I believe with all my heart that there will be people here who, whilst you heard me speak, the Lord began to convict your heart. And you are saying, Apostle, the summary of all that you have told me is that I need Jesus. I look at my life and if I'm honest, I know that I need Jesus. And I don't want to start 2019 just like that. Or others are saying, I love Jesus, but I need a rededication. Our time is gone. Please, if you are here, overflow one, overflow two. With the exception of overflow three, I will request that you just walk to the front of your projector stand. If you are here, please quickly make your way to the front right now. Quickly make your way to the front. Overflow one, two. If you are coming, rush and come quickly. Wherever you are, God bless you. People are coming. The Holy Spirit is convicting people. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? We are starting the year and there are many people who want to make the year right. God bless you. God bless you. Keep coming. Our time is gone, but we'll wait for you. We'll give you a minute more. Quickly. Please clear the way for those coming from outside. God bless you. Jesus said, whoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. It's my honor to lead you to Jesus, to hand your life over to him. Um, this is the best time to do this. You're starting the year and you're starting with the Lord Jesus Christ. There's nothing to be ashamed of. It's like saying you are better today than you were yesterday. Lift your right hand and say this sincerely from the depth of your heart. You're joining them. Please come join them very quickly. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I believe in you that you are the Son of God. Tonight, I hand over my life I hand over my days to you. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. And I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I reign in life. I'm a child of God from today and forever. I belong to Jesus. Amen and amen. Keep your hands lifted. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for starting with us. We are glad to receive these ones to the fold. And Lord, I pray that the grace that keeps men, let that grace keep them. I pray that you help them, O oh God. I separate them from the limitations of the past. And I declare in the name of Jesus that they are walking in righteousness and true holiness. 
the grace to walk in all this is released upon you in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen thank you so much um, there's a lady waving her hands all of you ladies and gentlemen in concert I just want you to follow that lady there will be a group of people to just talk with you very briefly let's honor them as they go thank you hallelujah now let me speak over your life in the name of Jesus may this year truly be a moment of extraordinary fruitfulness everything the Lord has declared concerning you and concerning this ministry I speak over your life carry the evidence carry the evidence of strange wealth and prosperity carry the evidence of superior dimensions of the anointing carry the evidence of honor unprecedented carry the evidence of speed and progress in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare that this is the year God will make a statement with your life in the name of Jesus and up front we release by prophecy the grace and the angelic backing that has been a portion for this word in this season we declare over every life over every family in the name of Jesus we declare let the miracles begin let the testimonies begin let the signs and wonders begin in the name of Jesus Christ everything the mouth of the Lord has spoken concerning this year you will begin to see it in your life for some of you even before the miracle service you would have seen the hand of God in a very mighty way in the name of Jesus Christ we believe you are mightily blessed to connect with the ministry and get more from Apostle Joshua Selvan, follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Koinonia ENI to stream Koinonia Live. Go to Mixler.com. And download the teachings on KoinoniaSermons.org. For questions and inquiries, call 0814 721 4444 or 0907 777 7853. We love and send you.